a makeup air system. So the major thing here is an, an effective commercial kitchen ventilation system requires balance. So as designers, installers, and operators of kitchen ventilation systems, you may be the first person to call when the exhaust system isn't, isn't working. Uh, usually you get that call of, well, my hood's not working. Uh, the hood's just a metal box. All the work is really being done by the fans that are up on the roof or up hidden in the, the ceiling. So uh, to complicate things a little bit further, this uh, commercial kitchen system is just a subset of the overall building HVAC system. So if those systems are fighting each other and not working properly, you could have some ill effects as well. But uh, the major thing here is there's no real ma magic relationships or magic in a commercial system. Um, your, exhaust hood, your exhaust hood sucks air out. You're required to bring that, back, that air back into there. Uh, it's pretty simple physics. So, um, so if air doesn't come in to replace it through the, the hood, you're gonna have problems. I'm sure a lot of people have come to see or walked up to a restaurant uh, somewhere where they're pulling hard on that door. Uh, there's definitely a negative pressure issue here. So typically codes are what dictate for most designs. Uh, for makeup air, IMC 508.1.1, uh, 2015 is the, co or the year I'm, I'm, I pulled for this. It just requires that the temperature differential be uh, 10 degrees. And then there's a couple of exceptions. And a lot of the times the exceptions are what a lot of manufacturers will pull out. Um, so that replacement air is exempt from tempering so long as the comfort slash cool, or the, the comfort for the cooling slash heating system can compensate for that additional load. Uh, the big thing there to look at is it can compensate for that load. Um, so you really want to kind of avoid using that exception if you can, because it's less problematic to temper at the source. So how and why, how do we introduce that makeup air into the uh, kitchen where it's not gonna affect the, the performance of the hood and do it so it's in an energy efficient manner. Um, so this can be achieved by the following pathways, uh, transfer air, uh, displacement diffusers, floor, wall, um, ceiling diffusers, perforated ceiling diffusers, and you can use perforated ceiling diffusers, uh, ceiling diffusers and displacement diffusers as ways to bring in transfer air as well as is if you were using a dedicated makeup air source. And then typically for most designs with the hood systems now, you're going to have an integrated makeup air source from the hood manufacturer themselves. Uh, first off the bat was short circuits, and then after that, or recirculating hoods, some people would call them, uh, air curtains, uh, front face or front discharge, your back wall or back return, and then for the most part, most manufacturers have settled on a perforated supply of plenum or a, a plenum makeup air plenum box up in the front of the hood. Uh, some manufacturers will do a combination, which is uh, typically probably your best bet is you don't want to for most designs, if you're, everyone will see like an 80, 20 design. Um, in reality, we'd kind of like to use some of that transfer air, maybe even a little bit more, depending on the size of your restaurant or the facility you're trying to do. Uh, so transfer air, uh, ASHRAE 62.1, um, pulling from the 2016 versions of that, at all the ASHRAE codes that I'm gonna talk about. Uh, you, you're designing for that ventilation for that space already. So you're already heating and cooling that down why wouldn't we want to use that air and transfer it over to the kitchen? Uh, and then ASHRAE 90.1 and energy codes allow that. They actually want you to do that. If you have a, this is for uh, ASHRAE 90.1 calls for anything over 5,000 CFM. Um, actually ASHRAE standard 154, I think goes below that too. Um, and they want to do that just because you're already heating and cooling that and you're using that air and then we're going to be exhausting it out to hood. So why not use that, keep the cooks and uh, staff a little bit cooler. And the big thing with that is we wanna make sure we limit the uh, the velocity going through there. So if you only have open kitchens, this is great. That's kind of the big thing that's going on in the industry. But if you have closed doors, the double doors, that kind of stuff, you, you wanna keep the uh, velocity going through there as slow as you can. So um, I use, there's a, a, a large chain in restaurant 
and this happens a lot too that I saw before they start opening up their kitchen was their pathway between the kitchen and the front of the house they just had one doorway and they supplied most of their makeup air out to the rooftop units they were doing exhaust only hoods and they would get a wind tunnel effect so anyone that was sitting right next to it you could feel the air just rushing by you so those customers are not very comfortable uh, they opened up their kitchen to the space and that solved a lot of the problem because they were able to reduce the velocity uh, fish nick I believe they're going under Cal Energy Wise now. Um, they, in conjunction with the California Energy Commission and ASHRAE, did a study, the Public Inter Interest Energy Study, or PEER, back in 2002, and then I think they did another revision of it in 2003. Um, basically going across and what the makeup air effects on commercial kitchen systems. Uh, the website links on the bottom there. If you push in or type in Fishnick, it will go there, but I think it changes over to Frontier Energy now, but the reports are there if you want to take a look at them. And the reason they did this was if you're coming up to a commercial kitchen hood, if you don't see the, if there's no appliances cooking and doing something, you, you see smoke, but you can't see the heat gradients. Uh, so what they did is they have a, uh, the Schillerian technology, so basically it allows you to accurately visualize those air temperature gradients to make it easier to see that heat. So the first one up here is the uh, displacement diffusers. Um, they found this to be pretty analogous to using transfer air. So the supply makeup air through the, the diffusers at a good distance away from the hood was a pretty effective strategy for introducing the air. However, typically with most uh, diffusers like for floor or displacement diffusers are usually go on the floor and the wall. Um, there's not a ton of space in most kitchens. Um, they're using that all up so you can't really have them behind shelving, that kind of stuff. So it wasn't, it's a very effective strategy, but it just typically for most restaurants, they don't, they don't have space for that. The next one up was uh, your four-way diffuser. Uh, located pretty close to the exhaust hoods. These are typically not the greatest to use. And the reason for that is the high discharge, high throw uh, interrupts and interferes with the hood capture. Uh, you can see from the video here, you're getting high discharge coming in here and it just pulling out some of the effluent because it's affecting the capture of the hood. have a video here of a, a hood. Um, there's no equipment in there, but it's a, I think it's a one-way slotted diffuser right in front of it. And this is just from a smoke bomb. And you can see it pulling out the effluent. And that's load going right into your space that your rooftop units or any of your equipment would have to overcome that. Um, Picture next to it, they had a good idea. They want to bring some rooftop air into the space to cool those kitchen cooks, keep them nice and comfortable. Problem with that is with four-way diffusers, high discharge, what typically happens is this is going to throw air right into the makeup air. It's going to mix, and what usually happens is it pulls off and doesn't get sucked back in, but rolls off and diffuses into the space. So causing a little bit more harm than anticipated and increasing your, your makeup air diffusion into the, the kitchen environment. The next thing up for their testing was a uh, internal compensating hoods or uh, short circuit. Um, they were developed as a strategy to reduce the amount of conditioned air required by the exhaust system uh, by introducing that portion of that air into the, the hood cavity itself. Um, the problem with this is in the way the uh, IMC and the code is uh, written is now they'd say your net so whatever you're bringing into the hood, you actually have to take out. So if it requires you to, if you're doing 2000 CFM exhaust and you're bringing 1800, the net exhaust is actually only 200 CFM. So if you're not even a, a listed hood manufacturer, you cannot produce these. Uh, most listed manufacturers aren't even doing internal comps. There are a few still out there, but uh, per most of the mechanical codes, I think IMC 2009 and maybe even the newer than that, 
I was taking a look at a couple of the, the newer codes. They're not even going to uh, allow an internal comp hood anymore. Just uh, ASHRAE 90.1, they don't allow them. Uh, negative impacts. Typically what happens with a lot of this, if you're dumping too much air into this, it's your spillage is usually towards the back end of the hood and out the sides. You get some you can see here. Um, but a lot of the spillage and heat is actually towards the, the back end of the hood because it's interrupting the natural flow of the hood system. And then also by, you've made your volume smaller too because you're introducing makeup air here. So you're not having as large of a volume for your hood capture. Next one up after that is your air curtain. Um, typically this actually performed the worst out of most of the systems if I remember right. Uh, your air just shoots down and what typically happens is that air hugs that back wall, circles through, it doesn't always get pulled through the first stage and it hits this cool air and then gets sucked out and pulled out into the space. Um, I think the air study showed 20% for most of the stuff I've seen. It, you're looking 10 to 15% for the most part. Um, you can utilize this system, but you, like I said, you're only gonna get 15% before it starts affecting the, the overall capture of the hood and affecting the overall building space. After that, we came with uh, front discharge or front supply. Um, the air is brought into the front supply and then shot straight out. Uh, some manufacturers had different kinds of louvers. Um, they're not all built the same. So that's, I mean, some of these systems were done properly. Other vendors, depending on what kind of uh, diffusers they were using in the, the front of the hood would actually cause the same similar problems that you would see with a, uh, an air curtain because if they're pointing down, that air is gonna do a similar effect and it's gonna get pulled right back out into the space and not work properly. Um, another thing is it's pretty much diffusing all into the space because you're just shooting it right out. So if you're using this type of system, you, you wanna heat and cool it. Um, if you're just gonna do heat and untempered during the summer months, it's gonna be hot, humid air that you're shooting straight out into the, the kitchen environment and putting that additional load on that rooftop unit. Uh, next option is the back return. Uh, this was actually pretty, f uh, pretty well received and did really well. It's one of the better systems that they tested. Um, and a big thing with the, the back return or back wall is you could have a, a failure rate at, they, they were going with 50% of your exhaust rate. And the big thing with that is the discharge velocity coming out and depending on how long this back return was, you definitely wanted to do it if you're doing this is below the, the cooking appliance but you needed that distance between the pilots and that to be about, I think it was like 24 to 18 inches, somewhere in there, because you want to keep that velocity down because if it's going too fast, you're going to blow out your pilots and you're going to have problems. Um, typically that was the major problem I've seen with this is depending on the size of this back return, if you have a, I think most uh, standard sizes, it's usually six inches deep or I've seen a little bit bigger, but the bigger you could get, the, the better the system's going to be before because you're going to have you can put more air in there or a little bit less air and have a less velocity. Uh, nice thing about the back returns also is uh, depending on where you're at, they provide in another six, eight inches. Uh, so your clearance combustible requirement could have been met by using a back return. Uh, next option and uh, one that's currently used by most manufacturers now is a perforated supply plumb or a plenum box in front of the hood. Um, out of all the tests, this one uh, showed the best performance uh, as long as, and with all the, uh, the makeup air, integrated makeup air approaches with hoods, the biggest thing with those, with all of them is having the proper velocity and also having the proper temperatures. Um, warm air tends to rise, cooler air tends to fall. So if you have ice cold air coming out from a front plenum like this, you can definitely see it coming down. I've seen pictures of makeup air plenums where they're using untempered air up in the north and this is all frozen out. So the big thing, like I said, was uh, your air velocity and your temperatures are very critical with this. 
Uh, typically, you're looking for a 24 inch tall hood. You have a six inch plenum. You have 18 inches from the top, or from the bottom of that plenum to the bottom of this uh, front lip of the hood. You want that to be probably running right around 140 to 150 feet per minute. Uh, these are tongue 80 inches off the floor. So if your cook's about 6'1", six, 6'2", six, they should feel the air on their head, but not really like blowing the hard down, just kind of a nice laminar flow. And the reason for this is with the perforated supply plenums, you're having multiple perforation layers. The first one would slow the air down. The next one would distribute it so you'd have a nice even laminar flow of air. Here's a video with the Schlaren cameras showing uh, it's two, I think it's an eight foot hood with two uh, three foot char broilers. You can see the makeup air coming down, blowing it air nicely, keeping it in so it's not disturbing the flow of the system. Uh, if you have this air coming in too fast, you're just basically going to create another air curtain. Uh, this diagram actually uh, got from a, a, a colleague that I used to work with. Uh, he's over at Blue Energy, or Blue Energy Engineering down in uh, Kentucky. So Zach Scott did all this. So This is the typical system for a makeup air plenum. If everything's working properly, you have the proper velocities, proper temperatures, that makeup air is not diffusing into the space. It's doing what it's supposed to do going right back in the hood. It's not affecting your rooftop unit or the temperatures in the space. Oops. Here's just a kind of a CFD showing that blast system, how everything's the right temperatures, the right velocities, that makeup air plenum is putting that air right back into the hood. Um, not affecting the cooking staff. Um, I think we're running right around 75 degrees for this. So having room neutral air, we'll say, um, typically with kitchens, you don't have to go by ASHRAE standard 55. Um, ASHRAE Research Project 1469 is actually thermal comfort of commercial kitchens. And they found that cooking staff and most personnel expect your, your kitchen to be a little bit warmer, but not in some of those uh, studies that were showing it. And I have a couple slides um, that some of these kitchens were in the summertime at 100 degrees, which is definitely not very comfortable. Typically what happens for most systems when they're not designed properly, um, he did a detected another thing here showing how the makeup air plenum not at the right velocity, you're diffusing a lot of that makeup air into the space. Uh, this is just a heated only unit. So if this is the summertime, that hot humid air is getting pulled right into that rooftop or churn. Uh, it's not going into the hood, not doing what, it, what you need the system to work and all this cooler, nicer air is being sucked right back up into the hood system. Couple more diagrams. Uh, this is a, a winter, so heated unit, blowing air into the space, having some of it diffuse out, not going back into the hood. And then this is a, uh, during the summer months, uh, untempered, because it was just a heated only unit. Air is just, I have, I have backed up, I flipped that up. I'm sorry, this is the summer, this is the winter. To, Solve that kind of problem. A couple manufacturers have come out with a kind of a dual plenum configuration to minimize the diffusion from that makeup air into the space while also providing some spot cooling for those cooking staff utilizing the, the rooftop units in space. Here's a video of that. The uh, red is from the rooftop unit, the blue, you can kind of see it mixing. That red rooftop air is kind of creating a curtain which is what we want for this because we don't want any of that makeup air to diffuse into the space. Uh, the makeup air is, this is during the summertime, it's 82 degrees. Uh, so it's slightly cooled, basically just sensible cooling where your rooftop air is 
discharge at a normal temp. Uh, major manufacturer had their dual system tested with a, uh, a with some computer software to see, and their big concern with the system was the humidity coming out of the system. So they wanted to test the uh, the dual system for the makeup error. So there's just a diagram of this, and then the kind of results showing the contours of that system. Um, on the right, both systems are working. Here, he's coming in. Here, makeup air. That's creating kind of like I said, that air curtain effect there, making sure that air doesn't diffuse into the space. Where when the system, the AC portion was shut off, and it's just a standard makeup air plenum, you can see most of the air is getting sucked back in, but you're still going to have some diffusion in the space, and you can see that with the uh, the relative humidity contours here. All right, does ash array allow transfer air to kitchen from casino floor if smoking is on that area? I am not sure if ash array allows that. I would have to get back to you on that one. And this is just a kind of a picture of the, the typical traditional system you've probably seen designed in the last probably three, five, I would say five to six years. Uh, you're going to have your exhaust hood, your makeup air plenum, your dedicated makeup air unit, uh, the dual plenum configuration with your rooftop unit. Um, hopefully these are perforated uh, diffusers to create laminar flow, not a high discharge, throwing some air into the space. And then the return, the make air for the units as well. So typical design, uh, your dedicated makeup air unit would be doing about 80%. You have about 20% coming from transfer air between the two rooftop units. And as long as everything works working properly, you typically don't get any calls. Uh, usually what happens for most systems that I run into that have problems is it's a makeup air problem. Um, makeup air unit was undersized. Um, the rooftop units may have been undersized and we're pulling too much transfer air. Um, the exhaust hood itself is not pulling the, the proper amount of exhaust air. Uh, it's the returns in the space are interfering with each other. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in a commercial kitchen hood system. Uh, so a couple of pictures of some returns in spaces where the systems bear basically, depending on how how large that rooftop unit is, your return sometimes can be a larger exhaust than your hood itself. So th those two systems could be uh, are detrimental to yourself, especially if you have the return located too close to the hood. Uh, I think typically for most of the major manufacturers, they would say 10 feet away. Um, I usually would tell people if we can keep the return away from the hood as far as possible. Um, and the reason for that is a lot of that hair in the kitchen space, especially if it's in, in a dish room, I've seen people put uh, returns in dish rooms. <laughs> it's very hot, humid. That air is just going to get pulled right into that rooftop unit. And if that rooftop unit is not sized accordingly for that, it's not going to perform properly and you're going to have a, a system that's fighting each other all the time. Uh, as I talked about a little bit earlier, ASHRAE 1469 research project on uh, thermal comfort in kitchens. Um, they did a study basically on a uh, hundred different restaurants and they did it on quick service, institutional, casual, um, over, I think it was a 12 month period. So they got the summer and the winter months in there and they took different readings, uh, talked to personnel. And for the most part, as you can see, uh, 75 degrees here for your summer and about 70, about 70 degrees for your winter temperatures. For the most part, most of the, the summer temperatures are really on the higher extreme here. So like I said, in your cooking areas, you would see typical temperatures closing into 100 degrees. Uh, so warm kitchens throughout the year, and then you're Workers typically came uh, accustomed to the warmer temperatures, but only to a certain point. 
Uh, so to try to work with that and promote a, a safer environment to, and to kind of eliminate some of that quick turnover that you typically have with the uh, cooking staffs when I talk to restaurant owners is I've talked to about using kind of a dedicated outdoor air system approach. Um, a lot of the manufacturers are kind of jumping on to this uh, idea. Um, so, I, but you can't, I was just, let me say this. This approach is not gonna work for everybody. And the best bet for this is to talk to your, your owner, um, get the information that you can to see what will work. Because uh, in certain situations, the traditional design may work better. Um, the dedicated outdoor air approach um, has actually been used for most fast serve restaurants for a long time now. Uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, that kind of stuff. They're using just exhaust only hoods. The rooftop units are providing that outside air and you're getting a nice, and their kitchens are open. It's a nice laminar flow of air coming into the system, doing what it's supposed to do by utilizing that transfer air as much as they can. Um, big system for this is uh, cost is usually what most people will ask, well, is the system going to cost a little bit more? And depending on the situation, uh, I've seen a few where it does not cost more. It actually saves them a little bit of money. Uh, Zach did another video showing the system here. So exhaust only hood, fresh air. It's uh, filtered, nice, cool, comfortable air going right across your kitchen staff. They're sitting in front of that hot grill and it feels really nice to them. Air just gets sucked right back up into the hood and the system does what it needs to do. Um, you have less fighting with the rooftop unit and makeup air unit. Uh, I've seen systems where your dedicated unit in the summertime is a, a heating unit and the rooftop unit is in a cooling. If those aren't interlocked, you have one unit heating, one unit cooling. So some advantages of going with the dedicated outdoor approach, you're fully conditioning that air coming in, you're lowering the humidity levels if you're using reheat options. There's less equipment on the roof because you're eliminating that dedicated makeup air unit. You're getting rid of that rooftop unit. You're getting rid of ductwork, but you're also for the hood side of things are decreasing because typically a lot of the exhaust only systems will have a lower exhaust rate. So you're making that ductwork smaller as well. Um, smaller fans, smaller motors. Uh, you're going down that path of it being a little bit more energy efficient and uh, providing those, that cooking staff a, a nice comfortable environment as well. And you're having the proper velocities coming across into that hood system to promote that better capture of it. Another system showing the dedicated outdoor air units, um, some supply diffusion duct. We'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit later. Here's an example of a integration that we've that I, a, a colleague of mine worked on in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Initial design was a hood system with the dual plenum configuration, a dedicated makeup air unit. A rooftop unit and a couple splits, I believe, and air handlers in the space. Uh, so the big thing here is 9,000 CFM of total supply air, 23 tons. Um, it's a kind of a closed off kitchen design. They did a redesign on it, opened it up. They were able to eliminate the air handlers up front go with two dedicated outdoor air units, a return for the one side. I think it was a 50-50 split on this one. Let me get my laser pointer out. And then a dedicated outdoor air unit that would serve for the makeup air for the hood system itself. They're able to lower the exhaust rate of the hood. Uh, the hood's performing properly at that lower exhaust rate with a proper capture and containment test that was done and commissioning. So they were able to reduce the air required CFM went down, tonnage went up a little bit, but the overall cost of the system was pretty much in line with this, the standard system and this provided a more comfortable environment for everybody. So for this one, um, 
these are just some numbers that they they, were, they gave me for the option for this one from Tennessee. Uh, as you can see, your dedicated rooftop totals were there. The DOA system here, but the difference in install cost ran right around for the two systems, uh, right around I think fifteen to sixteen thousand. So after everything was said and done, the pricing between the two systems, I think the difference between it was maybe eleven $1 hundred dollars. So with this system, we've also done some uh, case studies. Uh, we can provide these if you want. Um, this is for a location in Kansas City. Uh, so they monitored the two locations for a year. Uh, site A has the DOAS unit. Site B has your standard rooftop units with your dedicated make a bear. Um, they were able to lower the electricals and gas. And the big thing with that was the your precise can kind of control. You didn't have as much fluctuations with the systems. Uh, typically with most of the fluctuations on the system with the standard rooftop units, your compressor's turning on and off. So they're uh, cycling. So this would, went over the different cycles and then the average equipment. So they were able to have 32% reduction in equipment runtime. So you had less cycling happening. Uh, I think it's almost 60% fewer cycles. Uh, with that, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the uh, makeup air opportunities that Greasemaster provides. Uh, they have a, a modular system. So you'll have your air handling unit or your blower, and then you can add different kinds of heating. So you can do a direct fired unit. Uh, indirect fired, electric, uh, SER, so fully modulating. Um, don't do too much of this, but I have seen uh, hot water and steam. Steam was, I haven't seen the steam system for a few years, uh, but the hot water we have we have done. Uh, cooling, you can do splits or a packaged unit with the Grease Master systems, as well as uh, chilled water, evaporative cooling. Don't see too much out here, but when I was in Arizona, that was pretty much standard. And then accessories for this, you can also have intake hoods, uh, standard design practice for most. Um, hood manufacturers will just have an intake hood. Um, big thing with that is I would always recommend people putting V-banks on them. Um, you can still gonna get some particulate coming out through here, but usually if you're using a makeup air plenum, um, those plenums with the supplies usually get clogged up. So. That's a problem I've seen in the past where I've walked into a restaurant and the guy's like, well, the hood system's not working. We're looking around and his exhaust is working properly. His makeup air is kind of overloaded and we couldn't figure it out. Go look at the intake hoods. Oh yeah, everything looks good there. Lo and behold, we look up at the makeup air plenum and it's full of dust and dirt and all kinds of stuff. So you definitely want to be cleaning those plenums out. Uh, we also have mixing box, downturn plenums, and other stuff as well. Um, if you need anything with that, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more happy to help you. Um, I provide standard AutoCAD designs for kitchen hood systems. Um, we do ductwork stuff, exhaust fans. Um, another newer product that we're getting into now is, uh, we saw that on the one diagram, was the air diffusion supply duct. Uh, it's definitely something new in the system or in the US, they don't see too much of this kind of uh, stainless diffusion duct. Uh, so the utilizing 3D laser cut holes, uh, it's providing an even air diffusion. And there's three different hole patterns. Uh, so showing you a couple of the different ones here. I did some of the uh, CFD analysis on this, the top one shows how the heating is provided when the warm air is supplied through the duct, quickly dispersing and mixing through the condition. Uh, here we go, get this going for you, sorry. Dispersed throughout the conditioning of the space, I'm sorry, and then mixing prevents stratification and ensures a comfortable space temperature. Uh, cooling version, uh, cool air supplied throughout the duct, dispersing and mixing throughout the condition space as well, preventing stratifications. Some of the other product lines that we have with Grease Master, uh, ventilation hoods, uh, makeup air plenums, uh, drop-in 
perforated sealing diffusers, uh, different options for grease filters, uh, pollution control units, makeup air units, dedicated outdoor air units, uh, listed grease duct. We do have single and double wall duct as well as chimney pipes. So if you're working with a wood stone oven, you have to directly vent that. We do have options for that as well. So kind of summarize what we talked about today. Uh, major thing I wanted to say for this is we definitely want to utilize transfer air as much as we possibly can. Um, you're already heating and cooling that ventilated air. So if we can use, utilize that air, take that away from the dedicated makeup air that we have to provide. Uh, code requires it to be uh, overall building to be slightly positive. Uh, near the hood system, we definitely want to be negative because we don't want any of that influence smoke getting into your patrons and diners. So big thing with this is our best bet is always to try to utilize multiple sources of makeup air as best we possibly can, given the given the design constraints of the building and what you what we have to deal with. Um, next thing I would say for that is proper air velocities is probably the next biggest thing. Uh, if your air velocities are too great near the hood, you're going to be pulling effluent smoke and grease out, and it's just going to cause uh, problems for the rest of the, the HVA system as well as the the cooking staff in the, in the space. Uh, you're going to increase the temperatures. It's going to be a little bit more humid. You're putting extra work on that rooftop unit. And then biggest thing for hood systems, if you want to minimize your makeup air, is to minimize your exhaust flow rates. So designing with a listed hood, getting that equipment lined up of what that, the, the kitchen staff is using so we can say, hey, if we can move, instead of having a broiler on the left-hand side of the hood and having an oven in the middle, we flip that around, put the oven on the left-hand side, put that broiler in the middle where that exhaust uh, riser is, we're pulling your exhaust is going to be pulling the, the uh, your, it's, it's an easier uh, capture and contain when you have that heavier duty appliance towards the middle and then your lighter duty appliances towards the end. Or if you're utilizing walls, putting in a hood right up against an L shape of the, a wall, that's definitely going to help because you're creating a natural uh, end panel for that hood system. So instead of having three open uh, spaces for you. You actually only have two. Um, uh, cross drafts are usually a, a major concern from a lot of stuff. Uh, if you have island hoods, typically your exhaust rates are a little bit heavier on those. Uh, if you're utilizing uh, makeup air for hoods where it's integrated, you can get uh, prefer or you can get plenums that go all the way all the way around the hood. So that way we try to minimize that PSP size as much as we can because we're going to minimize that diffusion. And then uh, demand control ventilation systems. Um, those uh, reduce on light our light loads and heavy loads, depending on what your kind of your cooking is going on. Uh, some references. So uh, what I pulled for the makeup air effects, the peer report, uh, Blue Energy Group, shout out to Scott, and some of the ASHRAE journals and some CFD analysis. With that, that's the end of my presentation and uh, open it up to questions here. Let me see here, pull up the box. All right. You answered the one, Jeremy. Um, yeah. For the back supply option, how does this work with utility routing on the back side of the appliances? Good question. It does not work that well. <laughs> um, I have seen uh, manufacturers kind of route um, stuff through the makeup air plenum. But the big thing with that is what you're getting into then is kind of a utility chase and then trying to introduce air through that utility chase, which is never really effective. So for that, they would have to route those utilities around. So that was, that was kind of a, a big seeking point for a lot of, uh, kitchen designers was with that back return is kind of having to deal with those utilities and having to move them around. All right, John. Clients are installing cooking grills that are open on the backside to the public. What's your information? All right, John. Um, 
open on the back side to the public. I'm assuming it's kind of like a uh, an island configuration then, but uh, I'm not positive. So I would, Jeremy. I would assume that is the um, that is the application that John is referring to. That it's an it's, island. An island. Exactly. Yeah. The okay. cooking the cooking equipment is not up against the wall. It's out in the Oh, open, open. like you're describing an island yeah an island configuration is if you can your best bet is always try to push it up against something so a lot of people who try try to do like demo cooking or where people can actually watch what they're cooking while they're doing it um, I've seen plexiglass used all the time and it's kind of a it's a wall you're still having a back wall but you're us, utilizing that plexiglass uh, problem with that, I've seen with that though is it gets kind of dirty people have to clean it off that kind of stuff and it becomes kind of a a cleaning nightmare but a lot of demo cooking i've seen done that way and that's probably your best bet if not you have to utilize a, an island hood which your cfms are definitely going to go up you're going to require more makeup air um island hoods are not the best option but there are certain situations where you have to use an island hood where there's no way around it and then you just have to design with that in mind uh, so utilizing transfer air for those types of systems is usually a good bet and then utilizing if you're going to go with a dedicated makeup air unit is a uh, perforated supply plenum all the way around the hood and still utilizing that transfer air. So you, let's say you're going to use 50, 60% dedicated maybe, and then the rest from your, the transfer air from the space. Usually with island heads, you see them in um, larger facilities, uh, casinos, um, some hospitals and stuff like that. So usually it's a, a big a bigger system that has the capacity for that transfer air. Uh, ASHRAE allowed transfer to the kitchen for casino floor. I, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Do you work? Hey, Jeremy, I'll, I'll read you the questions just to help you out a little bit. Sorry about uh, that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, uh, yeah, ASHRAE about the casinos and transfer air, we'll get back to you. The next one is, do you work with coil vendors for special applications, for instance, freeze protection coils. Uh, there's a manufacturer or a type called uh, Cooney coils. I believe this is referring to when you mentioned the different uh, makeup bear heating options where you had uh, gas and electric, and then you also mentioned uh, hot water and steam is not often used. So I think that's what this question is referring to. Uh, we. Uh, Grease Master works with, I think, one or two different coil vendors, but I mean, um, anything's possible. I, I was gonna say, it was HC, I was gonna say, with us, we, we can definitely get different <laughs> vendors in there. Uh, the nice thing about those units is they are modular, so we can put up a different kind of coil that would not that would not be a problem. So if you have a special case where you want to discuss something, please reach out to us and we'll find a solution for you. <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. And then the next question is, what did you say the plenum discharge velocity should be in front, in of, front the of the hood? Okay, for, if you're doing, um, for transfer air, you want it anywhere from 50 to 75 feet per minute. It's a nice laminar flow. Coming from the makeup air plenum, if you're using a perforated supply plenum, uh, if you're 24 inch tall hood, six inches or 18 inches away, you want, Basically, you want that um, that velocity to be about 140 to 160. 160 would be a little bit on the higher end. Um, if you get to bigger hoods where the depth is like 30 inches, your that lower end velocity goes up a little bit. I believe if you're doing a 30 inch hood with a six inch plenum, so you have 24 inches difference, you can do about a, I think it's 165 to 185 feet per minute. Okay. Why not fabric duct? I actually yeah, I, have I, seen fabric duct done in kitchens. Uh, if the system's working properly and you're capturing everything at the hood like you're supposed to, which typically doesn't always happen, the problem with fabric duct is usually it gets uh, pretty dirty pretty quick. Uh, I know I've seen some laminate diffusers that kind of use that fabric duct. Um, so it's actually a couple engineers, I think, in Illinois do it a lot on some some projects that I've worked on in the past and it worked out really good for them because it's a nice laminar flow. It's the same kind of concept as a perforated supply diffuser. 
just utilize a fabric duct so it's a little bit less. Um, just line of sight was the biggest thing with those because sometimes they kind of dip down. But you can use fabric duct, um, it, just a cleaning problem. That would be the only thing I think I've seen. With okay, those. great. And that's obviously for the supplier makeup air can't be used for the exhaust air. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yep. And then you know John McDevitt did confirm that we he was asking island about head. the island. Great. Thank you. And then John Hilhowski, uh asked, how low can you turn down? the airflow of the exhaust hoods is okay. 20 or 30 percent possible all right i've had this debate a few times <laughs> um the big thing with this is all hood manufacturers have a listed minimum cfm and the demand control systems allow you to go below that but only to a certain point um so and then i know energy i believe the energy code ASHRAE calls out that you should be able to turn down more than 50% if I remember right. A lot of the demand systems have a, I'm going to call it a, a pre-cook situation where they're basically coming in their prep mode. That's what it is. Prep mode situation where all they're doing is exhausting 15, 20, 30%, not having the makeup air come on at all. And it's just kind of pulling that ambient heat when they turn on the, an oven in the morning or something like that, where it's nothing major. So a lot of them do have that, so they can turn down. Um, for those kind of turn downs for the your exhaust fans, you want to make sure you're using a, a variable frequency drive or an ECM fan. Um, belt drives typically can't turn down that low from a lot of stuff that I've seen, but as long as you're using an exhaust fan that can get down that low. And there are systems that, like I said, they use kind of a prep mode. Uh, I wouldn't be turning them down 20 to 30% all the, all the time during, let's say, they get a rush and then they want to come in and they just turn it back down to prep mode, you're still going to have a lot of ambient heat coming off that equipment. So it's, you, you, you would negate the savings that you have with the fan energy by ex having that heat escape through the hood when they, but uh, you can turn down, I'd say 20 to 30%. It'd be, like I said, just during those, those prep mode kind of operations. Okay, Our perforated great. kitchen diffusers, all stainless steel construction. Uh, yes. For, um, the systems that we produce, they are all stainless steel. Okay, next is what would be your ideal dimensions from the hood to place a supply diffuser if using the DOAS or R2 supply air direct to the space? Uh, I believe they're asking how far away, far away for horizontally. Your, yeah, your diffusers. Um, you want to be, because it's going to depend on the throws. So typically for most, I mean, the old school way of doing this was you want to keep any four-way or high discharge diffuser 10, minimum of 10 feet away from the hood. Um, with a perforated diffuser or something like that, where it's more laminar flow, uh, you can get them a lot closer. Uh, if you have like a, uh, a galley kitchen, where typically there's not a lot of room and space, uh, the PSP kind of takes up too much space where you can't get lights and that kind of stuff. Uh, we've utilized... Uh, perforated supply diffusers, dropping the air in a couple of those spaces and then utilizing the rooftop or the DOAS for that. So you want to be far enough away to not affect the so airflow cap around the hood. Yeah, to, to affect the capture of the hood. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. And then next is how should you handle a multiple hood arrangement where there are multiple exhaust fans you but you want to use just one makeup, makeup air, air unit. Ah, yes. The, uh, I'll say the multiple vendor situation. <laughs> uh, so you have multiple exhaust. So are you using different uh, fa exhaust fans because at one end of the hood there's, uh, you know, stoves or ovens, and then the other side of the hood has, uh, you know, a, I don't know, a charcoal broiler or something? Well, solid fuel, you would have to have a dedicated source for that. So you would have multiple for that. But for his question, I'm assuming they're going with um, like your, your mall food courts. I'll just say food courts in general. So you have multiple vendors and they'd each have their own hood system um, and with their own exhaust. So and depending on what they're doing, they're cooking at different times, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the mall itself only has maybe one maybe two makeup air units, just depending on how big the, the, the food court is. Uh, the big thing with that is turn downs with your makeup air. Uh, 
if you're just doing kind of like a dedicated makeup air unit with some heating and some cooling, typically the problem you run into for most units like that is turned down uh, on the heating side and then cooling side as well. Um, there are ways to handle that. Um, usually what happens is you'll have to interlock the makeup air with the exhaust fans and those exhaust fans for those hood systems may not be, they may not have anybody in there cooking, but they're going to force that fan on. So that way you can meet the minimum turndowns for your makeup air unit. Right. We, we uh, you know, a previous uh, project, um, we uh, supplied a, um, they had a, um, a country club with a bunch of different uh, hoods for dishwashers, um, you know, different cooking areas. And we ended up providing a single makeup air unit that we put a VFD on there. And then if, you know, these number fans went on, it equaled this CFM. So they, they tried to dial it uh, as a say, makeup air in that, in that aspect. You can do a static so, pressure sensor as well. I mean, and yeah. connect that to your VFD. That would, but like I said, the yeah. biggest thing with that, that I ran into with those types of systems is depending on how, how much you're exhausting and how big that makeup air unit is, is turndowns usually becomes the, the nightmare for the, the designer and the installer on that one. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, from a heating perspective, but also from an airflow perspective. Yep. Okay, right. I think that's it. So just a, uh, you know, thank you, Jeremy. Just a reminder that um, you know we're having we're 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 we're, we're, we're swapping our webinar schedule for Tuesday uh, for June and then May. Um, just we if you need a PDH credit. Uh, please email me. This is Jim O'Donnell. And, um, you know, thank you all for attending. Appreciate, uh, you know, real, appreciate real, you quick, real quick, Jim, before we go, um, Micah Dillon was the winner of the Sterionizer fan system. So, Jeremy, I think that's uh, one of your guys. So. Oh, go, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> so, make arrangements to get with him. And uh, we, we just recently uh, became the Zender Rittling, new climate reps in Philadelphia. So you'll be seeing a product announcement coming into your inbox. You know, I try to be conscientious and not blow people's inboxes up with, with different things, but uh, that'll be coming. And uh, you know, once again, thank you everybody for, for spending time with us this afternoon. Yes, thanks everybody. Uh, I believe we're gonna have a, a questionnaire at the end. Please uh, fill that out. Any feedback is always great love to hear about that and if you have any questions my contact information is on the the form there please feel free to reach out my cell number or give me an email i'd be more happy to like i said I'm more happy to come out take a look at a, a hood system with you guys and give you some feedback on what i think great thank you jeremy yeah thank you guys thank you, jeremy awesome great job yep have a good one guys thank you